All right, we are live. Beans and Eats podcast number one. We are joined by Adam Kellerman, owner of Scuffed Up, and Joe Salvatore, content director for Scuffed Up. Thanks for coming, guys. Yeah, thank you. This is exciting. Up, thank you guys for having us. Yeah, Some absolutely. Good stuff. You guys liking your beans so far? Dude, you guys are all about the beans. All about it. Is it's, that coffee beans? Yeah, coffee that's, beans. That's, that's what, what we say. To. Very good. It's I'll take pretty a much. It's pretty I much Keurig coffee beans, beans. Exactly. energy drinks, limited food. Tony doesn't like to drink water at all. I'm not a water guy. He's got to do it. Really? Yeah. So, dude, you got to drink water that will live, though. No, isn't that weird? Like, I was <laughs> thinking about You feel good, though, day. don't you? <laughs> Last week, I was, or like a month ago, maybe, I was like sitting there. I was like, I actually don't think I had a sip of water in like a week. That's I don't ridiculous. Know how I'm living right now. That's, <laughs> that's really Because you're drinking other things that are water based. Yeah, obviously. Right. But, but still. It's not good. No, it's you got to like have red, water. Red Bull is water based. There's a red Bull. <laughs> yeah, there's a, <laughs> little, there's a little bit in there. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah, I mean the most I, or the most water I get is melted ice and Starbucks drinks. That's no, ridiculous. Like Don't tea. you ever crave <laughs> water though? Like some Sometimes. days, like literally, actually, perfect example. This afternoon, I was sitting at my desk eating lunch, pretty much, and halfway through, I'm like, dude, I am craving water so no, it bad. It tastes really good. I don't know why I just don't. It's not like I don't like the taste. It's just something I remember. I'm always craving. Well, water. we are what like seventy five percent water as a human. Yeah. So it would help to f- to to. F- I'm better. Help my mind be more creative. It does. It improves your attentiveness. It must. Yeah. It <laughs> Beans can only does. go so far, Tone. Yeah, I agree. Well, that's true. I'll fix that up in 2019. That's there you a good go. Resolution. New Year's resolution. resolution. Drink more there you water. Go. Good stuff. Post so it on at, Instagram. Like so, Adam, else. tell me how this started up. Scuffed up. What exactly is it? So where did you get the idea up, from? Scuffed up originally started as a line of shoe cleaning products. It was originally just this product that comes in the box. Um, I own a sneaker store in Buffalo on Elmwood Avenue. It's called The Seller, um, at The X Seller on Instagram. We sell, like, Hypebeast, Sneaker, Limited, Yeezys, Jordans, all kinds of stuff like that. I've been there. I've been collecting sneakers and Supreme for probably, like, I don't know, the last six or seven years. So I was always really into it, always wanted to open a store, um, an opportunity popped up to buy out an existing store and I, I ended up buying out an existing store that was there. It was similar to my store, but it was only brand new shoes. Same thing though, like limited Yeezys, Jordans, whatever, no clothes though, Mm -hmm. just shoes, all brand new. The market in the shoe culture was starting to shift at that point. And what year was this around? How, how this was two years ago. Okay. Okay. So it was starting to shift more into Whereas three or four years ago and before that, everyone always wanted the brand brand new shoes. Mm -hmm. That was it. Now, all the younger kids coming up would rather buy a pair of shoes that have been worn one time or twice, still in good condition, for two hundred dollars less. Yeah, you know. So plus, they get the like the old school feel. Right. If you're if you're into that, buying like Jordans that they never even seen Michael Jordan play. Right. Right. They're buying those shoes because they're coming back in style and yeah, people love it. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. the market was starting to shift, and the owner of it was called Soul High. It was in the same location. The owner of that store, he wasn't really willing to shift with the culture. He didn't want to sell used shoes. Okay. He wasn't really into the clothes. Mm-hmm. So he was like, all right, I'm, I'm out. I'm going to pass it along. I was good friends with him and a couple of his employees there. So together we ended up buying the store. There was three of us. Now it's down to two, just me and my business partner, Seth, and uh, bought the store, bought, didn't buy the building. We bought all of the inventory that was inside of it. Plus I had a ridiculous amount of inventory of my own. Mm-hmm brought all of that into the store. We remodeled, rebranded, yeah. had a grand opening. I was just talking about this in an earlier interview today that the grand opening was probably one of the most like memorable days of my life. I, I think bet. like thus far, um, we had a line around the block till wow. five o'clock and we opened at nine in the morning. I just didn't realize like how everyone was so into like into that. Yeah. When I opened it and not only that, but like everyone knew that I had a crazy collection and I never really showed it off. So once everyone heard that I was opening a store, it was like, on did you place. do like yeah. a lot of promoting? Like how none, was nothing? None really. Just talking to friends so like, and word of mouth? Yeah, I do a lot of social media stuff. So obviously I was starting to post about it on social yeah. media and whatever. But 
only like maybe a month or two before we opened. Wow. Just that's it though. No other promotion, just social media. Wow. And yeah, just word of mouth grew and we had, it was crazy. It was cool. awesome. That's but awesome. that's, that's originally how the product started back to the original question. Mm-hmm. So opened the store, was really into sneakers. I ended up sponsoring the Travis Scott and 2 Chains concert. Did any of you guys go to that? When was that? Concert. This year? Yeah. Uh, no, it would have been last year now. year and a half ago. Where was it? Canal yeah. Side? It was Canal at Canal Side. Side. I don't yeah. think Taylor so. Taylor made a music festival. I went to T-Pain one. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> free Canal one? Side. Yeah. Yeah. That was crazy. I just got into rap a couple years ago, so I wouldn't have been there. Yeah. <laughs> so so there was a Travis Scott and 2 Chains concert. Um, the, the people that were throwing that concert came to my store and wanted us to sell tickets. We always sell tickets for shows, so I was like, sure, we'll do it. We end up becoming a sponsor for it, and the guy that was throwing the concert, we started talking. He came into the store one day to pick up money for the tickets after the concert was over, and he was on the phone with someone talking about buying a factory or something. He he does like a lot of private equity like business stuff. Mm-hmm. He's a venture capitalist. Yeah, pretty much. And uh, he got off the phone and was like, yeah, I'm trying to buy this factory in buffalo they make like cleaning supplies like magic eraser type stuff and i was like wow we use magic erasers to clean shoes all the time like we should make a product if you buy it and he was like really that's cool let's Mm -hmm. do it so months later we end up doing some testing and stuff and that's how our original product was born i came up with the idea to put them in little mini shoe boxes shape them like shoes that's Um, cool they work really good as like a like a quick touch up kind of thing, but it's not like a heavy cleaner. Yeah. Right? So we, we had to expand from there. Gotcha. So but now is that like where you spend most of your time with scuffed up now? Or are you still mainly working on selling things through the seller and then just selling your own products through the seller? Because I mean, technically you, yeah, you kind of deal with both. So. so I do sell the products at the store. Yeah. Um, we also, we have an office on Delaware, which is where I've spent majority of my time for the last year, probably, which was tough for me because I love my store more than anything. And Mm -hmm. I love being there. So taking a step back from it and doing something else was kind of tough. Yeah. Uh, It was just like, that'd be be tough. Yeah. Yeah. Like I didn't want to do it, but at the same time I was really excited for what this could be. You got to grow, you know, you got to, so yeah, I was like on the fence, you know, like, do I spend a lot of time working on this and trying to make it right? Or do I just stick with the store and you can't half ass it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I had to pick one or the other. Luckily my business partner at the store had a little bit of extra time while this was going on. And he was able to kind of hold things down. Yeah, that's good. While I was gone. Yeah. Cool, cool. And this other product here, Slam in the Bag, I know, Slam it in the bag. I know this is newly released. And this is, I've seen Joe's content just. Yeah, Joey's a beast. Un- unbelievable. I mean, it's crazy. So when did you guys link up? And because I know you've been, you know, just pushing content. Uh, when did you guys yeah. link up? I can to speak on that. Yeah, a little yeah, bit. Definitely. Bring him on to do so, all that. Adam and I kind of grew up from afar next mm-hmm. to each other when grew up in the same town. Um, so we've known each other since then, but, uh, I went to Oswego, studied mass, uh, broadcast and communication minor in videography, got out of school and tried to do the, you know, go get a good job thing. Yeah. So I worked for Fox TV locally sales, hated the corporate atmosphere. I didn't know you were at Fox. I, didn't I was, know you were that. I was wearing a suit, I suit I every day. Can you picture that? The suit That's guy. really funny. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> I was hiding the tattoos. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I worked, worked there for a year, learned a lot about the corporate culture and how business works really Mm -hmm. left went to a startup digital marketing agency i left there and went and worked for a new buffalo t-shirt factory who prints uh music merchandise for for concerts Mm -hmm. yeah that was when we met you you were still working there yeah yeah and um that was right around the time i really started to develop my videography skills that was right around the time he opened up the cellar we kind of started to work together more and more and then I decided it was time for me to leave mm-hmm. because more opportunities arose to, to just do what I love to do, which was the yeah. video stuff. And then, you know, it, it didn't even take a day for me to sit down with Adam and he was like, dude, we'll, we'll bring you on board mm-hmm. to, to help build this up. So it's been about shit, eight months. Yeah. Eight months, been about eight, like months. eight months. And, um, you know, we're making pretty big strides, man. Yeah. I mean, you know, this is, this product, the slam it in the bag product, is not 
exactly where we where we started things with the sneaker cleaning, but it, it couldn't have ever happened without without. It's got to um, start somewhere with up, it, yeah. Right? So Nate, uh, Nate Robinson is he's a sneakerhead, and we. Yeah, how did you get in contact with him? Because all of a sudden I was watching your content. All of a sudden I see like yeah. these, the Patriots on here. I see the yeah. McCordy brothers or the twins, and then um, yeah. Nate so, Robinson. So I'm one like, of how the, these guys coming out of here. Yeah, one of the people that were had been involved with us, kind of as Scuffed Up was growing, has a lot of uh, athlete athlete con- mm-hmm. contacts, and um, he kind of got us in touch with a couple people out in LA, and we went on a trip out there, and basically we were challenged to go and meet up with Nate and his brother in in Compton. They were playing yeah, they, basketball in Compton. They were um, like if they come to if they actually show up here then then they must be dedicated. That they didn't tell us this until after. So they like told us to come down and meet them and whatever and so we were flew out there. We were I think we were going there for for a couple of different things, but flew out there, got there and they were like, "Yeah, come meet us here." And we put it in the GPS and it's like Compton like we're like driving I pulled over to get gas and we get into the to gas pump and this dude just comes running up I'm like all nervous thinking this guy's gonna rob me or something yeah and he's like oh I work here I work here he's like pointing to his jacket where there is like a shadow of a place where there used to be a name tag there but there wasn't anymore and he was it looked like he like found it in the dumpster and like threw it on and mind you we were driving like a brand new mercedes yeah like, That's and tough. We were just like yeah. ran out of gas smack dab in the middle of compton <laughs> yeah so Damn. so we got to um wow i don't know if anybody's like a 2k player a 2k NBA not really player. not yeah really. i mean i've played um, a decent amount decent nothing amount. crazy but, uh, nate nothing was playing either way it's a famous place yeah nate yeah. was playing at the drew league which is like a huge it's a it's a huge uh, developmental league, mm-hmm. and he kind of took some time to chill with us after he played his game, and he he really messed with the product, and we kind of kept a relationship, kept uh, building a relationship with he and his brother, and um, the original idea was to get Nate to just like promote the sneaker products. Slamming in the bag was not even a thought. There was no thought of even doing a product with Nate or anything. So it was going for time. like influencer marketing. Exactly. From the so we yeah, just we just okay. went exactly. and linked up with him just to try and like obviously if you can get a chance to meet yeah, someone like yeah. that, you're gonna take it. But yeah. the idea was just to get him to to help with the sneaker cleaning stuff and whatever. And we talked to him and everything was cool. But then after we got home we didn't talk for a few months after that. Like really? Nate Robinson and Scuffed Up completely parted ways after we met him at first. What was for the reason for that? We had other stuff going on and got really busy as soon as we got back from that trip. Mm-hmm. Um, we were doing like lots of sneaker events and just other f- athletes and things that kept popping up. So we were just taking every lead that we could get. And he wasn't really pressing us about anything, so it just kind of went both ways. And then a couple months down the road, we got a call from him, and he was like, yo, I'm ready to do something. Like, let's do something. So we were like, all right, cool. And right around that same exact time, the people that make our cleaning solution, it comes in a bottle. It's like a bottle of sneaker cleaning soap. Mm -hmm. They were coming out with a product that was similar to slam it in the bag, but had no idea how to market it or what they wanted to do with it or anything. So they brought it to us and they were like, can you guys use this? It's like a deodorizer kind of thing. So we played around with it and then we heard back from Nate and everything just kind of aligned. And we were like, all right, this is the perfect thing to do with this guy. And they all came together at the perfect time. And that's recently, right? That's the past. everything. Well, I don't know how recent that is. A couple months. A couple months months in the works in terms of really hammering things down in terms of, I mean, man, there's been a lot of legwork in terms of PR strategy, you know, getting him on talk shows, radios, Mm -hmm. um, you know, getting a commercial. We've got a commercial running for the next couple months on ESPN for that specific product. You know, we've got a Kickstarter that, you know, when people are watching this will be released. So check so out the live. Kickstarter. Slam it in the bag dot com. Slam it in the bag dot com. Slam it in the bag dot com. That's yes. it. Live now, Kickstarter. So just to just to touch on the Kickstarter thing really quick, a lot of people think that when you use the word Kickstarter, people automatically think that you're like just donating yeah, so money. Yeah, it's just a donation. Like it's not a go. That's what I thought at first. Exactly. And that's what everyone thinks. And I and I hate that it has that reputation because mm-hmm. 
It's not that at all. It's not a GoFundMe type thing. You're not giving me your money and getting nothing back for it. So, so it's like pre-orders and maybe stuff like It's not like even that, like pre-orders. So the best way that I can describe Kickstarter is it's a really like exciting, fun way to launch a product and give your customers more than just a product. So not only like say you go on our you can go on our Kickstarter right now and back it it's called which is paying for something. Mm -hmm. So you decide at what level do you want to back this project? Do you okay. want to spend $5,000 or do you want to spend $10? So anywhere in the middle there there's going to be a whole bunch of different options, money options for if you put in $50 you get two slam it in the bag products. You also get an autographed Nate Robinson trading card and a t-shirt and a gym bag. So for 50 bucks, you're making, you're making out. Like yeah. it's a hell you're of a something. deal. The whole point of Kickstarter is giving your customers more than they would normally get. Oh, so okay. really you're That's getting, sweet. you're That's getting nice. like some sick yeah. deals. Yeah. Yeah. Cause once this product is off of Kickstarter and just being sold through our website and everywhere else, you're going to pay full price, just by which is like $16. The draw is, I mean, it, it's the reward system. Like there's yeah. really cool rewards. Like, yes, there is a $5,000, donation but mm -hmm. it's not that, a donation. that would well not donation but it's a reward <laughs> you pay pay for it and then you know nate's gonna fly to you and play one-on-one -on -one basketball with you That's and you it. get a ton of product yeah is That's there like cool. an option where you could put in like hundred thousand and like be a potential investor so I, that would be a pretty cool I, there idea. is like you can make idea. that an option yeah, yeah that'd be you, pretty cool you can you know? do that I mean, However, if you, I'm not saying just for you. I'm saying yeah. for anybody that's doing like a Kickstarter out there. So that would be a cool idea to try to look for investors. Yeah, you can put in as much or as little money as you want. So there's no limits on any of it. Yeah. But we've only structured our rewards program yeah, to yeah. go no, up to sense. five thousand okay. dollars. Yeah. So if you wanted to do above and beyond five thousand dollars, great. You that's, just have nothing. That's cool you for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll do that. You yeah. also have an option of when you're on there and you're submitting your money of what you want to do, you either pick the option that you want, like the $50, the 250 and then you get those rewards that come with it. Or you can say, here's $500, and I don't want anything. They can just, oh, just So oh, if you okay. want to so donate, just, you oh, can. That's cool. so it's, but yeah. you don't, you know what I mean? Yeah. You don't have to. Like, I, I actually did another Kickstarter for the original Scuffed Up product. It was the first one I ever did. I knew nothing about it. Joey helped out a lot doing it. We both knew nothing about it. And it was just like such a struggle to like get through it and do it. And I I'm, bet. I'm the type of person that I've never asked anyone for a dollar in my life. And when I first heard about Kickstarter and ran the first one, I felt like I was asking people for money. Mm -hmm. And I hated that so yeah. much because I've never had to do that before. Mm -hmm. But now that it's explained to me how it really is with the rewards and the product, you're not yeah. asking for a donation. It's, it's a marketing play. Yeah. yeah. So it's a, cool concept. it's a brand awareness Kick play when you're kicking off your brand. And Kickstarter has mm -hmm. over 5 million active users. So what's your goal like personally for, for these products or the one that you're working on? Do you, do you have like a set goal that you get to? We do. We do. Yeah. yeah. And if you don't hit that goal, you get nothing. Really? So we set a oh, ten thousand. We, okay. we set a ten thousand dollar goal, and if we don't, if we get nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine dollars, and it ends, all of that money gets returned back to the people that put in. Really? And we get nothing. Wow. I didn't so know that. it's a stressful. It's yeah, really, it really stressful, hey. and you have to be practical when you set your goals. Mm -hmm. You don't want to set a high goal. That's a good. Yeah. I set a five thousand dollar for scuffed up when we first did it. That was way higher than it should have been. Luckily, we still mm -hmm. hit the goal. But barely, like yeah. pushed, 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 pushed. Yeah. yeah, I was nervous. Man. But at the end of the day, like Joe was saying to you, it's a, it's a PR, it's, it's awareness. You know? Yeah, it's more but it's good. Yourself. I mean, that'll force you to get those goals done. You know, yeah. and you mm -hmm. know what, man? It's literally we, set in stone on paper. You yeah. better be doing this, or else it's kind of gonna come back and bite you in the ass a little bit. Yeah, yeah right. it's stressful. You, you know what? We we've made a lot of mistakes. No, we've, yeah, we've you made have a ton to, of though. mistakes, and we've learned a lot from them. And I think with this specific product we've kind of pulled the knowledge that we had with the original one and we've, you know, tweaked our strategy and kind of, we've, we've really learned a lot from it. And our attack plan right now, in my eyes, is pretty much bulletproof. But in the same regard, crowdsourcing campaigns are, mm -hmm. are, are difficult to gauge success yeah, until I mean, it actually happens. So, yeah, and like where Joey says bulletproof, 
I am like the you opposite. Could, yeah. Like no, I, could all, I saw it on I literally yeah, saw it. They so. all like, you gotta have a good balance though. They all get mad at me at the office because anytime someone brings up an idea or anything, I play devil's advocate I'm that so guy. hard. I'm that guy too. I'm like the I'm idealist. Guy. He's the yeah, he's the And they always guy. say that I take it too far. <laughs> like I yeah. take it too far playing devil's advocate, but someone has to do it. And you gotta have it for sure. I feel like it ends up you but know? like you still come up like I mean you still come up with good ideas and stuff but like at the end of the day you set realistic right. outcomes that you don't want to like mm-hmm. you know you want to hold yourself to a certain standard and you don't want to keep letting yourself down mm-hmm. so I mean but yeah I mean you need a good balance you need to have right. the optimism the optimism and then you need to have the balance where you're just really going to make the actual goals to get it done or else yeah. so I read this so much. I read this on a fortune cookie the other day and I just feel like it's relevant right now the the it said on the fortune cookie if two men are in business with no arguments then one of them is unnecessary yeah that's cool that makes a lot of sense so Thanks. you know like and wow. bouncing off of that man we argue all the time yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> and we definitely get sick of each other yeah. often you know and it, but to even bounce bounce off of that man like the most important thing to get us to the point where we are is we've got a good team and we all when it comes down to it we'll bicker and and get on each other's nerves as much as possible but we know that the next person brings as much value as the next mm-hmm. so that's that's the most important part and you guys know it as well as yeah. anybody else you guys have made some huge strides and that's not because you guys are slouches like you guys have a good team and you believe in it it's together all about the team. It's team yeah it oh, really yeah. is man. everyone's got the same mindset going so many Jordan, people you know? try and do stuff by themselves just like unnecessary out of greed or like whatever mm-hmm. because they don't want to share anything with other people or like just think that they yeah. can do you know like 100 yeah, really percent of nothing people is... or whatever i am so like opposite of that i would yeah. rather you gotta surround yourself dude you know? i would much rather have a team of 20 people around me helping and me sharing a little bit of everything that comes in with them sure. than yeah. trying to do it with two people. And you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Like it just, you end up shit actually works then, you know, and you to, learn so much too, you know, with like when you're bouncing off ideas, you have right. that idealist and that, you know, someone who's practical on the other side, but then, and you know, everyone on that team has a different spin on it, but they all have that same end goal. So that's right. why, mm-hmm. yeah. And we huge. gotta give a shout out to we've got two two great interns, dedicated interns, unpaid. Yeah. But man, they they're all about the college brand. students or just college students. Yeah. Okay. For um, unpaid interns, man, they're amazing. Like I gotta give them so much credit. Yeah, they it's crazy. That's like awesome. they are dedicated, man. They come in, they have like schedules. They come in all week long and are there for hours at a time doing whatever work yeah. like sometimes it's just busy work mm-hmm. and they still no complaints yeah. like they're that's just great. happy to be a part of the process and it's so cool yeah that's good it's to really have though cool. i mean we have the same type of thing we got two guys on our team we brought on this year that are literally solely dedicated to growing this brand with us and right. seeing the opportunities and who they can meet and all this stuff with it you know like we have a group chat we're literally texting all night like right we're we're bouncing ideas we're watching our own videos like at two in the morning, yep. giving each other critiques on it, being like, "That's how we are too." It's the same. It's it's great though. Yeah. And they'll, you know, like this podcast isn't funded. Right. Like, like right. fucking Adam Adam Russell over there. He's he's killing it. He set this whole thing up. Yeah, it's I awesome. Mean, we it's he, good, I literally just gave, we gave him the card. He, I said, "I trust you, dude. Just buy the stuff that we need. You know, don't spend crazy amounts, but yeah. get enough. Like quality mm-hmm. matters here. We're gonna do it right, and uh, we send it up. And we got Crane over here doing." videos mm-hmm. and making sure we're all in big frame. shout out to both the boys I mean, they've, not, been, they've been working so hard all, man yeah. i mean they That's came in they about. came into this like they knew what they were doing but it's a whole different field to in real estate yeah. dealing with clients you know going on their own taking photos videos just learning how we work because we're yeah. crazy we're right. hyperactive and, during the day we're like what's next and, and, and you they, guys are dealing with a different beast like yeah. we are in we have a product okay and yeah we have to speak yeah. to the consumer but you guys are in you guys are in service man it's like, yeah. different, different yeah, yeah it's totally different you you have to monitor every every yeah freaking word you right, say right right yeah you know exactly. you guys do a good job of it there's no one ever has a bad word about you guys yeah Thank we're trying to it's tough sir i was gonna ask bring that up too it's like what like the difference between a product uh company versus a service because i mean no matter Such what a big difference. it's a huge difference it really mm-hmm. is it is and like our whole goal with this was like like yes we wanted to get sales really early on mm-hmm. but i wasn't so concerned with sales for the first year of business. 
I could care less what our sales were for the entire first year of business. Mm -hmm. All I wanted to do was build a brand. That was my goal was to build a brand that people knew or had heard of Mm -hmm. and that had a good reputation and you know, like yeah. something that people were just like, oh wow, they popped up out of nowhere and are like killing yeah, it yeah. now, you know? That's like all building that brand and just doing fun, different things. And Get part your name of out there, yeah. a huge part of building a brand is having really good content. And that's where Joey comes in and yeah. what he's really good at. That's what's so, cool about yeah. all the visual and creative stuff is that it's a different world now. It's all digital. Everything's right. on our phones and laptops. People want to see you know, fully edited photos and, and high quality videos, you know, like, and they want them like if the quick. event happened, yeah, oh, yeah. they right. want they them want at it. the end of the night. Oh yeah. yeah. We're you guys are great yeah. at turnaround. 24 yeah. hour and turnaround you know time. Everything. <clears throat> Everyone in this room right now, like we're, we're considered artists, mm-hmm. right? Whereas 10 years ago, uh, what, what kind of career are you going to have? Yeah. But now yeah. the skill set that we bring is invaluable. Because yeah. of the world that we're developing, it, developing yeah. into so many the, more digital, the digital world. Oh yeah, people so, can pick their own their own choice of education. So if you, you can know. leverage that creativity and vision that you have, and mix with the hustle that you gotta yeah, have, yeah, you have to have you consistency. Can really, you can really yeah, uh, freaking capitalize yeah, on that. Absolutely. And that's the thing too is there's so many people out there now that are like faking it that are just like seeing everyone else like, oh, I want to work for myself and start a business. Yeah. And you hate to see that, don't you? And you then, know? yeah, because then they get into it and yeah. don't realize that it's not f- like all fun. No, yeah. Like it's everyone, a, it takes a ton people, of work. People you know? ever, gets, ever since I opened the store, all like I get tons of like DMs and things from like younger kids that are that all like follow me on Instagram or know about the store or whatever. And they're all like, oh, I want to start a clothing brand or this or that or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, can you give me advice? And it's just like, yeah. plan on working 24-7. <laughs> seven it never and ends. And not, it's not like fun and games like you see that we portray it on Instagram, mm-hmm. I guess, because it seems like it's all, yeah. it's all fun. It seems and we're like just, you can make We're that. hanging out with athletes and doing this and going to LA and New York and wherever else we go. But it's mm-hmm. everything that comes in between there. And all of that the, they don't see everything yeah. that comes. It's every after email. Too. It's every text. It's every call you it's make. that Nobody sees. I know you guys listen to Gary Vee. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so of course. I mean, Adam was really the first person to introduce me to him uh, through the book Crush It, and mm-hmm. it just kind of speaks on personal branding and how to mm-hmm. build your personal brand. I look at Instagram as one hundred percent. It is branding. How many oh, jobs yeah. I've gotten through it's the insane, way that I it? the oh, way yeah. that I portray myself through mm-hmm. social media. It's crazy. Although I don't really. I mean, I feel like I'm kind of whoring myself out a little bit, to be completely honest, to kind of look a certain way. Mm-hmm. But people love it, and that's how I've gotten certain jobs that I've gotten. It's Social crazy. media so, is everything. Social media is huge. You it's, guys are on Instagram. I've seen that. Yeah. Do, do you go all across Facebook and, and Twitter as so well, or it, not as much? No, not I, as much. I do, like, before Scuffed Up even started, I was always really into um, social media and, and things like that, mainly Instagram. Like, I can't even tell you how many Instagram accounts I have and have had I've I started basically a little side hustle of building up Instagram accounts with followers and then selling them or turning them into real businesses yeah people do that with domains for actual websites right but now it's a whole new world on on just an app on your phone same same type of deal but I've built up like so many different Instagram accounts and that's what I I honestly love doing social media Mm -hmm. specifically Instagram I should say but and now I just got hired even though I own two businesses and work 24 seven, I got hired by a club in Buffalo to do their social media. That's awesome. And Good they're paying me a salary with health benefits and dental <laughs> to really? do, to run their social media. That's account. insanity. Wow. <laughs> good it for you. them. Good for them. and good for you. Oh, so it's cool. I love it though. It's fun. Shout out to rec room. Yeah. Oh, that's rec, rec room? room. Is that rec room? Yeah. Rec cool. room. Cool. It's a good place. Yeah. Stuff, man. Yes. Shout out to Chris. I lend my hand when awesome I can. There. <laughs> And actually, it's me and Joey started just making videos for them, whatever. Chris, Chris is a friend of my, one of my other business partners, and they kind of put us in contact when the bar was opening for me and Joey to do 
videos and mm-hmm. stuff all the time and then it just turned into yeah. more than that but that's where i first heard a record was actually joey's video yeah, we see, yeah. well like 90 yeah, i was like where's the new place it looks right. like a new york city lounge it's like yeah you think yeah, that place looks is like, like nashville or new york city or, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. we saw really you nice. filming oh, yeah, one yeah, night yeah, yeah. i was yeah. that was <laughs> great <laughs> well well it's funny because i go in there and i and i go shoot and adam doesn't drink but i go there and i'll get I'll get hammered and just go shoot. Yeah. Like, I, it's fun. Me, I'm, they're bringing me to the kitchen. I'm having shots with the owners. I'm like, whatever. I'm working. Okay. Yeah. 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 I mean, it, I mean, it come out great still. Yeah. Creativity yeah, right? never ends, you know, no. but it, I mean, back to like the social media stuff is it's crazy that we, as like literally half of our job is trying to explain to the, our clients what social media even right. is and how to use it and right. why you need to get on it. Cause all of our clients are people who have never grew, they didn't grow up with social media. I mean, most of them. Majority. So yeah, that's, majority. that's why I, that's tough, it's tough for us. It's that's why I tough. brought up Rec Room is because now in the in the world that we live in, people are starting to realize that social media is ninety percent of your entire business. Whatever your ways. whatever your business is, whatever you do, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Anything in the world, whether you're selling something or own a bar or whatever it is. Everything is on social media. If yeah. you have no social media presence, you're not going to do very. You're, you're not yeah. going to do. Sorry, you could still do well, yeah. but you're going to do way better. Especially in the next that. decade. I mean, you're yeah. you're right. going to be eliminated. You know, right. With done. the exclusion of businesses that are just like B two B. Yeah. Yeah. But any consumer exactly or businesses, businesses that don't are, even like need. I mean, we run in the businesses where like it'd be a perfect opportunity to make a video or like do some social media for them, but they literally are like. We don't even need more clients. It's like, that's crazy to me. Yeah. Right. But I mean, people that are trying to grow their businesses and trying to promote any type of product or service, social media has to, is, is the way to go. So you guys are, you guys are on Instagram um, or on social media selling the products too. Do you have a website? Do you have, yes. are you going in stores too? Cause I know I mean, brick and mortar is going down a little bit, but are you mostly mm-hmm. online? Is it mostly e-commerce? Mostly yeah. online, but we're, we're kind of, we're in the process of, Getting into more stores across the country, more clothing boutiques like mm-hmm. Adams, like the Cellar in, gotcha. in Buffalo, because that's that, that's the wheelhouse, man. Yeah. Like that. Once we can, you know, and we get s- into a place like Villa that has like 126 stores nationally, mm-hmm. then we'll just you know wholesale or consign products to them, and we'll just kind of take our hands off and let them do the sales. Yeah. We spent a lot of time trying to do that too, especially Joey. Joey spent a lot of time setting up the interns and kind of managing that whole aspect of it, of searching for all of these different stores throughout the entire country. I mean, Mm -hmm. we have an insane list of every single damn store in the country that would possibly take that product. Oh, really? And we've reached out to every single one of them, pretty much. Emails, calling, whatever it Mm -hmm. may be. The biggest issue is, currently, those two boxes that we have of Scuffed Up resemble a Nike box and an Adidas box. So the big box stores and the other ones won't take it because it's too closely resembles that. So we're in the process of getting a, a just a different design. So it's box. just a box you'd have to rebrand. Yeah, I mean, it would, would it the I mean, think, think about it as a as a, a sneaker boutique that sells a, a bunch of Nike shoes. Yeah, if Nike catches can't. wind that you're selling something that's a rip off of their brand. They're gonna pull their inventory. Right. Right. You don't exactly. want to mess around with Nike and yeah. and they don't. No one wants to take any chances. No. Like, and to be honest, I'm not even too like concerned about getting into like the smaller boutiques and stuff like my store. Like mm-hmm. in the beginning, I would have loved to do it, and I still would love to do it. But at this point now, I just I want to get into Dicks and and Foot Locker and Finish Line and Villa and the big stores yeah. and just run the wholesale and pump this pump it out That's as awesome. much as possible. That's great, man. Mm-hmm. It's a great product. I, I'm looking forward to seeing Slam in the Bag come too. I mean, well, I mean, I'm gonna promote it everywhere as, as well. So, your yeah, hockey, hockey, that. or hockey and lacrosse, hockey yeah, and yeah. lacrosse. So you tried it out. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, it was amazing. I put it in my car on the way home from the office actually, and then uh, Thomas was in my car like the next day. He's like, "Wow, it smells like essential oil. It smells incredible." <laughs> and I'm like, "What is it?" I'm like, I "Forgot to take out the other yeah. thing for the hockey bag. It was in my car." So yeah, it, it's it great. It's and that's awesome. ex- that's exactly what it is. It's it's so, it's based on essential oils. So. Whereas something something like a Febreze or a, uh, what's another one, Arm & Hammer, mm-hmm. those little balls that you might throw in your bag, mm-hmm. they might work for a week to keep the smell away, maybe. Yeah. But this this will actively keep the smell away and actively clean and start to eliminate mold, mildew, and fungus. So how does it work? You just 
you just once those particles from that product become airborne, it it comes into contact with those sources of mold, mildew, and fungus. Okay. So it actually it cleans to, your stuff it too. Technically, to, it begins cool. to um, work at eliminating. Them. Like okay. if you put it somewhere so. where there's mold, you'll actually start to see the mold go away. Yeah, wow. I saw you I saw something there. you did like and with the, the strawberry, strawberry test. Yeah, yeah. So strawberry, the strawberry test. We'll, we'll give you guys that picture so you can throw it. Yeah, up yeah. In, the in strawberry the test, the strawberry to, test so. was incredible, and it's like every single person that we show is blown away that's, by the that's results. That's pretty cool. Because it's crazy. We took just to like give a, it a quick breakdown, and you guys can throw up the little time lapse or no, picture. I was just gonna ask the time lapse. Yeah, we'll we throw it up. we put two strawberries in glass jars side by side. One of them, we put slam it in the bag gel inside the jar. The other one, we left it with nothing, put the caps on, let it sit for five weeks. We came back to it and looked. The strawberry with slam it in the bag in there still looked like a perfect strawberry. <laughs> like it was a little bit faded, but there was no mold on it, nothing. We're talking about fruit yeah. sitting out in the open air for five weeks. Imagine what like a banana looks like after you leave it out for, I don't oh, know, man. a 20 week? minutes. You're right. Anything. <laughs> it turns brown. So the like. strawberry still looked good. If you look at the other one with no slam it in the bag gel inside, you could not even tell that it used to be a strawberry. It looked like wow. a big pile of black mush. There was, no <laughs> there was nothing left of it. Like it looked like the most disgusting thing ever. It was is a really awesome experiment. So the essential oil thing, it, it's, I mean, it's effective. Yeah. It's it's been rarely used for this purpose, which is why we think we we're be we're gonna be able to get our foot into the athletic market with it. So you know, the next month or so, next two months, we're gonna really see what kind of impact we can make, and we're really looking forward to it. That's awesome. That's yeah. well, we'll be looking for your products in the stores. We'll put a link below as well. Thank you again to Adam and Joe for coming on. This is this yeah. has been awesome. I hope you Good guys stuff. learned a lot and uh, get your beans in. Get your beans, beans in. Go. Hey, TSV. Cheers, boys. Cheers. Beans. Cheers. 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 Oh, oh we're cheers, yeah. cheers and across. Oh, we're cheers and across. We're cheers and across. Wow. All the way. Wow. Oh, wow. That's, that's effort. Uh, <laughs> I had my stretch. mug turned the wrong way. Cut it. That's all right. Yeah. Any other brand? Somebody.